Greetings, nerdlings. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing the types of transport across cell membranes. So there are three forms of transport across the cell membrane. The first two are passive. Remember, passive means peaceful, and it does so without energy. So passive transport does not require energy. We have two types. We have simple diffusion, which is when materials move down their concentration gradient from a higher concentration like this up here of water to a lower concentration, so they equal out. We also have facilitated diffusion. This is passive, but the solute, like glucose, has to use a transport protein to get from one side to the other. It's still going down the concentration gradient, meaning it's going from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. So similar to my classroom, oxygen is diffusing into and out of my classroom through all the tiny little nooks and crannies in the ceiling under my door, but we, people, humans, have to use the door. Now it doesn't require any energy if the door is open, we just have to enter the classroom through that because we can't really fit under the door or through any of the nooks and crannies in the ceiling. At least I can't. The third type of diffusion or transport is called active transport. Active uses energy in the form of ATP. And you should remember that from our energy enzymes and metabolism lecture. We get energy from ATP by breaking that last phosphate bond. And that releases a lot of energy. In active transport, we are going from a lower concentration to a higher concentration against the concentration gradient. So, first off, we have simple diffusion. That would be like when I put that drop of food coloring in a beaker, and eventually it's going to diffuse from a strong or a high concentration to a low one. Just like when I showed you guys this, if I sprayed Axe at the very front of my room, it's going to diffuse to the back of my room eventually. So it moves from high to low concentration, and an example would be oxygen or water diffusing into a cell and carbon dioxide diffusing out. So we have water going down the concentration gradient does not require energy. It's simply going from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. Facilitated diffusion is like using a door. And an example would be glucose. So it's still going from a high concentration down the concentration gradient to a lower concentration. But it requires a transport protein because these can't get through the small spaces of the plasma membrane phospholipid bilayer. So they have to use that transport protein. Just like I have to use the door to get into the classroom. So here's an example of facilitated diffusion. Going from a high concentration, using those transport proteins, to a lower concentration. So molecules will randomly move through the pores and channel proteins. Another type of facilitated diffusion is a carrier protein. They start off at one end of the protein or the membrane. They grab that protein and they transport it to the other. And they grab it and then they transport it. They're going to grab that solute and then it's going to transport it to the other side of the membrane. So they bond with the molecule and then they drag it across the membrane to the other side. And that's another type of facilitated diffusion. Active transport, think of active ATP. It requires energy. And it moves materials from a low to a high concentration against the concentration gradient. Like if I wanted to stand up, I'm going from low to high. That's going to require energy. I'm using my arm muscles to push off. I'm using my leg muscles to stand up. Now if I were to go into a sitting position, I'm going from a high concentration to low. And I'm not going to use any energy just to plop myself on the couch. But from going from a low concentration to a high concentration, I'm going to use energy. Same thing occurs in cells. Whenever we're using a concentration gradient, we're going from low to high, and that requires energy. So examples are pumping sodium ions out and potassium ions in against a very strong concentration gradient, and this is called the sodium-potassium pump. 
So three sodiums are pumped in for every two potassiums that are pumped out. And this creates a membrane potential. Membrane potential just means that it creates a charge across the membrane. Now this occurs because both sodium and potassium are ions, which means that they are charged atoms, so they have a net charge. And whenever atoms have a net charge, they're going to charge the membrane itself, and that's going to create a charge or an electric field on that plasma membrane. So how do we move stuff around the cell? There are different processes. We have exocytosis and endocytosis. Exocytosis is moving things out. Exo, exit. Exo, exit. So that's moving things out. As you can see here, we'll have a transport vesicle, usually coming from the Golgi apparatus. It's going to fuse to the plasma membrane, and eventually it's going to expel whatever it doesn't want anymore. So molecules are moved out of the cell by vesicles that fuse with that plasma membrane. And this is how many hormones are actually secreted and how nerve cells communicate with each other. So in exocytosis, we have a vesicle that fuses with the membrane, so it comes over here, fuses with the membrane, and eventually the molecules are exited from the cell. So this is the opposite of endocytosis, which brings us to endocytosis. So large molecules move materials into the cell in one of three forms of endocytosis. So endo, inside. Endo, inside. So the first type of endocytosis is called pinocytosis. So I always remember this is pinch a little pint. So we drink a little pint of milk at lunch, pinch a little pint. Pinocytosis is cellular drinking. Cytosis is referring to a cellular process. In pino, tiny little pinch. Pinch, pino, pint, we drink it. So it starts off by forming an invagination of the plasma membrane. It pinches off, and what's in here are different solutes that are dissolved in water. So again, it's going to form an invagination. Materials that are dissolved in water get taken into the cell through that invagination of the plasma membrane. And we call that cellular drinking. Another type of endocytosis is called phagocytosis. Phago, food. We're taking in really big molecules. So molecules like bacteria and very large particles such as food. And the same thing, we form an invagination and these are taken into the cell through the process of phagocytosis. So I always remember phago, food, and pino, we pinch a little bitty like we're drinking a pint. So cellular drinking is pinocytosis, and taking in food or cellular eating is phagocytosis. So this example right here is of phagocytosis, and you see a yeast cell, which is yellow, being captured by the extensions of an immune system cell. So this is an invader, the yeast is. And this immune cell right here is engulfing it and it's going to basically dissolve that yeast cell and protect us from it. So this concludes our lecture for the different types of transport across the membrane. I'll see you guys next time.